Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so we are here this week again for a ZX seminar. And today we have uh, Vivian uh, van Dalen, who will be talking about qubit count optimization using ZX calculus. Please, Vivian. All right, thank you. Uh, all right, so first I will start with some motivations about why we want to optimize the number of qubits. So, of course, qubits is one of the most fundamental resources in uh, quantum computing. Uh, but what is interesting also about qubits uh, is that it also is a pivotal resource because it can be used as a trade-off for some other important resources. So probably the best example is for uh, quantum error correction. Because when we are using a quantum error correcting code, we are basically trading some physical qubits, uh, which are noisy, for some logical qubits, which are more resilient. And so by optimizing the, the number of logical qubits, uh, we can get more qubits, which can then be used to increase uh, the distance of the code. Qubits can also be used uh, for full tolerant get synthesis. So for example, we, we need a uh, more qubits to implement some magic stack distillation protocols to implement the T-gate full tolerantly. Uh, qubits are also useful to, to reduce the depth of quantum circuits, uh, because with, with more qubits, we can usually parallelize the, the circuit. And also, qubits can be used as a trade-off resource for some quantum gates. So for example, by using ancillary qubits, uh, we can better optimize the number of, of T gates. Uh, and, and in fact, we'll start with this specific example, and we will see how we can optimize the number of qubits uh, in circuits in which the number of T gates has already been optimized. Uh, and after that, we will see a much more general approach for optimizing the number of T gates, the number of qubits uh, in, uh, in quantum circuits. So the, the Hadamard gate ca can be a problem when we are optimizing the number of T gates. So in order to, to get rid of the Hadamard gate, uh, some t count optimizers are using this measurement-based gadget uh, in which a Hadamard gate is replaced by a control Z gate with some new qubit. And then uh, a measurement is performed on, on the initial qubit. So when we do that, we can have some measurement outcome and so we also need to apply some uh, some pipe correction on, on the on the new qubit. And so the the workflow for optimizing the the number of T gates can look something like this. So first we optimize uh, the number of Hadama gates uh, in order to reduce the number of qubits that we will need to gadgetize all the uh, number of uh, all the Hadama gates. And then once all the Hadama gates has been, have been gadgetized, we can optimize the number of T gates. And when we are at this point uh, in, the, in the workflow, what we have is a circuit with an optimized number of T gates, but with potentially uh, an important number of qubits because we used one anterior qubit for each Hadama gate. And so, what we want to do is to add a final step to this process uh, in order to reduce uh, the number of qubits. And also we want to reduce the number of qubits without increasing the number of T gates. So what we can do is we can cancel uh, the gadgetization of some Hadamard gates. So what we did at the beginning of our optimization procedure is a gadgetization of Hadamard gates. And now what you want to do is the opposite, which is the, the degadgetization of Hadamard gates. And we can easily see two conditions uh, to degadgetize uh, Hadamard gates. So the first one is that we need we must have nothing between the control Z gate and the qubit which is measured. Because what you want to do is to is to merge these two uh, spiders, these two vertices here at the top. And also, we, we must have nothing between the control Z gate and the qubit, which is initialized, uh, in order also to merge the two vertices here at the bottom. So for example, if we have this uh, circuit, this ZX diagram, with some uh, phase gadget here, 
if we want to digitize this hardware gate, uh, we must move this phase gadget after the, the control Z gate so that we can merge the two spiders here and we can perform the degradation of the hardware gate. And so you, have, you can see with uh, this example that uh, the, the degradation of hardware gates is giving us some uh, constraints on the orders uh, that we must perform the, the operations such as the phase gadgets. And what we found out is that the, the problem of digitizing a maximum number of hardware gates is equivalent to the problem of, of uh, the minimum feedback vertex set, which is the problem of finding uh, a minimum set of vertices in a graph, such that when we remove these vertices, uh, the graph that we get is a directed graph without any cycle. So to, to understand this, it's uh, the, the, the easiest way is to look at an example. So here we, we got a ZX diagram with, with some phase gadgets and some hardware gates which, which have been uh, gadgetized. And we want to digitize a, a maximum number of hardware gates. So what you can do is to encode our constraints for the digitization of hardware gates into a graph. So for example, if we want to digitize the hardware gate H1, then the phase gadget alpha one must come uh, before the, the control Z gate H1. So in the graph, we put uh, uh, an edge, an arrow that goes from uh, alpha one uh, to H1. Also the, the phase gadget alpha two must come after uh, H1 in order to satisfy the condition for the digitization of H1. And so in the graph, we put uh, an hour from H1 to uh, alpha 2. And we do that for all the, the control Z gate here in the, in the circuit. Uh, and so for example, uh, H3 has uh, three neighbors because it has uh, three uh, phase gadgets here on the qubits on which the control Z gates H3 is acting. No. And so this gives us all the constraints that must be satisfied uh, in order to digitize the hardware gates. And if there is a cycle in this graph, then it means that all the constraints cannot be satisfied. So what we do is that we will remove some uh, hardware gates, uh, some H vertices in this graph, in order to get um, a graph without any cycle. And we want to remove the minimum number of uh, edge vertices as possible, because we want to digitize the maximum number of Hadama gates. So for example, here, if we remove the, uh, the vertices H2 and H4, then we get uh, a directed acyclic graph. So the graph doesn't have any cycles anymore. And what it means is that we will not be able to digitize the hardware gates H2 and H4, but we will be able to digitize the hardware gates H1 and H3. Right. So that's why we, it corresponds to the minimum feedback vertex set. And then once we have this uh, acyclic graph, uh, what we do to compute the associated quantum circuit is that we just have to perform a, a topological sorting of the vertices. So for example, here, alpha one uh, must be because, before uh, H1. So we will put uh, the, poly, the phase gadget alpha one at the beginning of the circuit. And then the topological sorting is giving us the order of the gates uh, and phase gadgets in the, in the circuit. And then at the end of the circuit, we have the Hadama gates that were not digitized. So in this case, it is H2 and H4. Um, all right. So is there, um, maybe I can take, I can take questions uh, during the talk. Uh, this was the, the, the first uh, result part of the talk. So if there are any questions uh, about this, or I can continue. Okay, so if there is no questions, I will just continue. 
so this was a very specific case uh, of qubit count optimizations when the number of T gates in the, in the circuit has been optimized. But what we would like to, to have is a much more general uh, approach to the qubit count optimization problem. And so we will see that we can actually do that by using the ZX calculus. And to do that, we will uh, not work with quantum circuits anymore. Uh, we would work with a, a computational model that is much more natural to, to work with uh, in ZX calculus. And this is the latest surgery. So in latest surgery, there is basically the, the split operation, which can be done for uh, green spiders and also red spiders. And there is also the merge operation, uh, also for the green and red spider, which takes several uh, wires at, as input, which are corresponding to logical qubits, and it merges them together. And you can see that uh, when we are merging uh, logical qubits together, then this is not a deterministic operation. So maybe there can be a poly gate, a poly error that appears here on the input qubit. And so in order to, to deal with, the, with this poly gate, we need some correction strategy. And so for example, if you want to implement the synod gate in AT surgery, what you can do is a, first a green split, then a red merge. Or we can do the opposite, a red split followed by a green merge. But in both cases, this is not deterministic because we have a merge operation. So in order to make them, this operation deterministic, we need to put uh, a correction here on the output qubit. So this is here symbolized by the, the conditional pi rotation. So S here is a measurement outcome, which is a zero or one, it is a, a Boolean. And so you can see here that when S is equal to one, we will perform uh, two times a uh, pi rotation. And so it is equal to the identity. So this indeed corresponds to the C not gate. And so to, to simplify, we will just assume that uh, the corrections uh, for in AT surgery can always be propagated on the output wires. Right. So first, what we can uh, notice is that in AT surgery, each wire corresponds to a logical qubit. And so the number of qubits required to implement a ZX diagram uh, using AT surgery operations corresponds to the maximum number of wires in any vertical cut of the ZX diagram. Uh, so for example, the number of qubits uh, needed to implement this ZX diagram is nine, because you can see that in this uh, vertical cut of the ZX diagram, we have nine wires. So it means that at this point in time, when we are doing latest surgery operations, we will have uh, nine qubits. But what we can do is, uh, this is a ZS calculus, so we can move the spiders around. So for example, if we take this uh, green spider here, we can move it at the end of the ZX diagram. And so now the number of qubits uh, required to implement this ZX diagram is it's not nine anymore, it is six, because the maximum number of wires in uh, in any vertical cut of the ZX diagram is uh, six uh, in this vertical cut here. So then the goal would be to move the spiders around in order to minimize uh, the number of wires in any vertical cut uh, of the ZX diagram, which corresponds to the number of qubits that we need to implement the ZX diagram using latest surgery operations. So to formalize this problem, we, we are defining the, a graph associated with uh, a ZX diagram. So for example, here we have the graph associated with this ZX diagram. So we are putting uh, a white vertex for each input uh, qubit 
and for each output uh, wires of the ZX diagram. And then for all the spiders of the ZX diagram, we are simply putting uh, a black vertex in the graph and we are keeping the same connectivity. And then what we can show is that the problem of minimizing the, uh, the number of, of qubits by moving the, uh, the spiders corresponds to, to the following graph uh, theory problem, which is a fixed and vertices cut width problem. So to understand this problem, the best way is to just look at this simple example. So if we have this uh, graph, which is associated to some uh, ZX diagram, then the, the goal is to find an ordering of the black vertices such that uh, the maximum numbers or the maximum number of edges in any vertical cut uh, of this ordering is minimized. And also we cannot move the white vertices. So the white vertices are associated with the input uh, of where the next ZX diagram are at the beginning here of the ordering. And also the white vertices uh, at the output of the ZX diagram uh, are put at the end of the ordering. So the goal is just to move the, the black vertices around in order to maximize, to, to minimize the maximal value here at the bottom. And so here, this is a, an optimal ordering, uh, which means that we cannot, we cannot do better than five. And so we will say that the, the cut width of this graph is five. And we will also say that the cut width of the ZX diagram associated with it with this graph is equal to five. All right. And so now we can clearly see that the problem of optimizing the number of qubits uh, in the ZX diagrams implementing data surgery operations is equivalent to the problem uh, that we just described which is the fixed and vertices cut width problem. So for example, when we have a ZX diagram, first we compute the associated graph, then we solve the fixed and vertices cut width problem. And then the solution of this problem is actually giving us uh, an ordering of the spiders in our uh, ZX diagram. And so we write the ZX diagram with this ordering. And this gives us uh, a ZX diagram in which the maximum number of wires in any vertical cut of the ZX diagram is equal to the cut width of the graph. So in this case, it will be five. And so it means that uh, this ZX diagram can be uh, implemented with five qubits. Right. But this is, uh, a good formulation, but the the optimization that we can do with this is, are quite limited uh, because we are only moving the spiders. And there are a lot of other rules in ZX calculus that could be used uh, to minimize the number of qubits. And so now- Ian, before, do... you, yeah. before you move on to the next thing, um, so for the lattice surgery operations to sort of correspond to things you can actually correct for, like there have to be certain conditions on the spiders. Um, is that something that's sort of not taken into account in like in this, in this encoding of the, of the problem? Or does it sort of like happen automatically? Oh, okay. So here we are assuming that uh, the corrections can always be uh, done on the output wires. And so there are some, some algorithms to, to do that. Uh, like the, the PF flow uh, for, for latest surgery. And when we have so, such a flow or such a correction strategy, then if we move uh, the, the, the spiders in the ZX diagram, this will, this will preserve uh, the flow. Mm. We will be able to compute uh, another flow, uh, which is equivalent to. Is that is it obvious? Because when you move a spider around, it becomes like a merge or a, or a split, depending on like what is an input or what's an output, and then like there's different conditions based on that. So that's that's not an obvious thing, is it? That like that preserves the PF flow. Yeah. Yes. Of course. When we are moving the spider, 
we are changing some merge with uh with split and some switch with merge. And so the the poly errors will not be in the same place. But the, the way to see it is that uh, the, the PF flow will give us uh, a correction strategy for each uh, poly associated with uh, each spider. And so it means that each poly rotation, pi rotation uh, for each uh, spider can be propagated on the output wires. And so if we have that, it doesn't matter if we have split or merge, we will always be able to propagate the pi uh, rotations. Okay. Okay, yeah, thanks. All right. So now we will uh, incorporate the, the fusion world in order to improve the optimization that we can do. All right. So the first thing that we can notice is that we can always optimize the number of qubits so that it is equal to n plus one, uh, where n is the number of spiders in the ZX diagram. So to do that, we simply associate uh, one horizontal line with each spider in the ZX diagram. So for example, here, if we have this ZX diagram with six uh, spiders, we just associate uh, one horizontal line with each spider. So we will have six horizontal lines. Uh, and then what we can do is because we have one spiders for each line, uh, the, the operations between the spiders can be done one by one uh, sequ sequentially, not in parallel. And so you can see that when we do that, the, the number of qubits in any vertical cut of the ZX diagram will be equal to the number of horizontal lines, which is the number of spiders, plus one where we are doing a, an operation, an operation between two uh, horizontal lines, between two spiders, uh, like a single gate, for example. And because we are doing the operation between the spiders one by one, uh, the number of non-horizontal edge wires in a, in any vertical cut will never be more than one. And so it means that the, the total number of qubits required to implement the ZX diagram this way will be equal to the number of spiders plus one. Uh, but this is very a simple approach and we can uh, improve it. So for example, we, we don't need to initialize all the spiders at the beginning of the ZX diagram. Uh, for example, this green spider can be initialized uh, towards the end of the ZX diagram after the, the red spider just above it uh, has been measured. And so if we do that, we just moved these green spiders, which was uh, below the red spider, we moved it after the red spider and by doing that, we just saved one horizontal line. And we were able to do that because uh, the red spider here and the green spiders uh, are not connected. So then uh, the problem is to associate a horizontal uh, interval to each spider such that two intervals are overlapping if uh, their associated spiders are connected. And we will see that this problem corresponds to the problem of finding a path decomposition in a graph. So first we will formalize this problem, which is uh, a little bit similar uh, to the cut width problem that we saw before. But this one, this time it will be uh, about the path width and not the cut width. So again, we compute the a graph associated with some ZX diag uh, diagram. And then the goal is also to find an ordering of the black vertices. But this time we are not counting the number of wires in the vertical cuts. But instead, uh, for each vertical cut, we are counting the, the vertices that are before the vertical cut and which have at least one neighbor after the vertical cut. 
So for example, here, after the black vertex, black vertex A, uh, the vertical cut has a cost of two because there are two vertices before this vertical cut, which have at least one neighbor after the vertical cut. So in this case, this is A and this uh, input uh, vertex at the bottom. Uh, as another example, after the, the C vertex, the vertex C, uh, we have a cost of three because there is the vertices A, B, and C, which have at least one neighbor after this vertical cut. And so this is three vertices. And we do that for all the vertical cuts of the ordering. And the goal is to find the ordering such that uh, the maximum value here at the bottom is minimized. And so this, in this case, this is optimal. And when, when it is optimal, we will say that the maximum value is uh, equal to the pathways of the graph. And we will also say that the pathways of a ZX diagram corresponds to the pathways of uh, the, the graph associated to the ZX diagram. And so this problem of finding uh, a pathway uh, is actually equal to the problem of optimizing the number of qubits. Uh, to implement the ZS diagram using only the fusion rule and also using the rule that allows us to move the spiders around. All right. So here is uh, uh, an example. First, we have some uh, ZX diagram. On this ZX diagram, we apply the spider fusion rule to merge all the of those all the spiders which can be merged. Uh, then we compute the graph associated with this ZX diagram. Then we are solving the fixed fixed and bags pathways problem on this graph. Uh, and so this gives us this gives us an ordering of the black vertices of the graph. So here the ordering in, is in the alphabetical order. And another way of representing this ordering is by representing it in terms of intervals. So for example, here, A will be at the beginning of, uh, of the, the interval graph, because here it is at the beginning of the ordering. And the last neighbor of A is D. So it means that the interval A must overlap with B, C, and D. And so you can see here that this is a case. The interval A is overlapping with B, the interval B, the interval C, and the interval D. So we do that for all the, the, the vertices, the black vertices in the order of A, and we compute the associated uh, interval with each uh, uh, vertex, black vertex. And so this is uh, representing the, the same kind of information here, uh, this ordering of the black vertices and these uh, intervals. Uh, and actually, the number of lines which are required to represent these intervals uh, is equal to the pathways of the graph plus one. So here, the pathway is three. And so it means that the number of lines uh, needed to represent these intervals uh, is four. No. And then each interval is associated to is associated to one black vertex, and each black vertex is associated to one spider in our ZX diagram. And so what it is telling us is that each spider will be able to, to be infused on its associated interval. So for example, here the so for the interval A, the associated spider is uh, the green spider here at the top. And so we will be able to infuse it only on this interval. And because uh, A is overlapping with uh, C, D, and B, which are uh, the, the neighbors of A, it means that the operation between 
uh, the spider A and the other spiders it is connected to uh, can be represented by vertical edges like that. Right. So in this ZX diagram, uh, each operation uh, between the spiders will be represented by, by a vertical edge, a vertical wire. Uh, but then this is not uh, corresponding to any lattice surgery operation because we cannot have vertical wires in lattice surgery. So what we can simply do is to uh, is to is to perform uh, to represent that into a sequence of lattice surgery operation, and we will do the operations between each uh, spiders one by one. Uh, in order to not increase uh, the number of qubits by more than one. So this is what is done here. You can see that we, we still have our intervals, but then the operations between the, the spiders associated to the intervals are done one by one. And so it means that uh, the, the number of wires in any vertical cut of this ZX diagram will not be more than the pathways of the ZX diagram uh, plus one. And then what you can do is uh, do some simplification uh, on this ZX diagram uh, without increasing the number of qubits. So for example, we can apply the identity rule and we can merge some vertices so, so that the ZX diagram looks a little bit nicer. Uh, but without uh, increasing the, the number of qubits. So this is a general strategy to optimize the number of qubits uh, in a ZX diagram. And then we have the following result. So if we want to optimize the number of uh, qubits in the ZX diagram by using only uh, the fusion rule and by only moving the, the spiders, then the the, the optimized uh, the number of qubits in the optimized uh, the diagram would be between the pathways of uh, the the initial the diagram and the pathways of the ZX diagram plus two. So here is a, a simple example for each case. Uh, so the simplest case is when the, the number of qubits is equal to the path width of the ZX diagram. So for example, this is a case when we only have uh, uh, qubits, uh, spiders, which are not connected uh, with each other. So for example, here the, the path width of this ZX diagram is one, and we only need one qubit to implement it. But then if we have some spiders which are connected, for example, for, for doing a synod gate, we need an intermediate qubit uh, to perform the operation, uh, to perform the synod gate here. And so that is why uh, the, the optimal number of, um, of qubits in this ZX diagram would be equal to the pathways of D plus one. And then the, the third case, is also when we have some uh, synod gates that must be performed, but also we need an ancillary qubit in order to store the result because before it is measured. So in this case, it will be equal to the pathways of the ZX diagram plus two. Right. But when we optimize the number of, uh, of qubits using the uh, this approach, it will always be equal to uh, it will always be in between the pathways of the ZX diagram and the pathways of the ZX diagram plus two. So what is nice about this approach is that it can be used to optimize the number of qubits in, a, in, a, in various computational models. So for example, this can, this can be done for uh, photon circuits. So if we have a quantum circuit and we want to optimize the number of qubits in this circuit, then what we can do is to translate this circuit into a ZX diagram. 
we perform our optimization uh, on this ZS diagram. And then, because when we are doing this optimization, our ZS diagram is already into a form of a quantum circuit with all these intervals. So it means that it would be very simple to, uh, to translate this optimized ZX diagram into a quantum circuit. Because each interval will, will actually correspond to a qubit uh, into, in our quantum circuit. And the vertical, uh, the vertical wires will correspond uh, to gates in our quantum circuit. And if we have a vertical wire uh, with some rotations uh, on the vertical wire, then we just need to use uh, a non zero qubit on which we are performing the rotation. And this will only increase the number of qubits uh, by one in our quantum circuit, because then we can uh, use the same qubit again to perform the other uh, vertical, the other operations associated to the vertical wires in our ZX diagram. Right. So we can use this method to, to optimize the number of qubits in uh, in AT surgery in, uh, in quantum circuits, but also, uh, for example, in uh, MBQC. So I guess in MBQC, the, the spiders are actually connected uh, by Hadamard edges. And we also have some uh, measurement associated with uh, each spider. And so what we need to use our optimization uh, strategy uh, for MBQC is simply uh, compute some kind of flow. So we need, uh, again, a correction strategy for the, the, the errors uh, due to the measurement. And also, we just need to use the appropriate fusion rule. So for example, to in, uh, in, in MBQC, we will use this fusion rule. And we have the, the similar uh, fusion rules for uh, the measurements in other bases. So this will be used in our algorithm uh, to, to unfuse the spiders uh, in, the, in each uh, intervals. So here is a summary of what we saw. Uh, so if the ZX rule is only moving spiders, then the, the best we can do to optimize the number of qubits in our ZX diagram is, uh, is to compute the cut width of the ZX diagram. Then if we add the fusion rule, the best we, we can do in, uh, in the number of qubits is the path width of the ZX diagram. And if we have a complete set of rules, uh, a complete set of rules for the ZX calculus, then the best we can do is the, the minimum path width of D prime such that D prime is equivalent to D. And so an open problem uh, to, uh, to minimize the number of qubits is to find uh, D prime such that D prime is equivalent to D. And so and such that uh, the path width of D prime is minimized. Also, when you are using a complete set of rules for ZX calculus, maybe it can increase uh, the number of non clifford gates uh, in the ZX diagram. So what you do like is, is to find D prime such that uh, D prime has no more non clifford gates uh, than uh, D. So here are some uh, some other open problems. Uh, so all the other problems that we saw, the digitization problem, the cut width, and the path width problems, they are all NP hard. So what we need to do is to design some efficient algorithms uh, for for solving this problem, and in particular for finding uh, a low width path decompositions of ZX diagrams. Also, uh, another open problem is to find some lower bonds or upper bonds on the qubit count. Uh, so for example, the, the path, the pathways of graph 
uh, is actually connected uh, to, to, to graph minors. Uh, also, the, the correction strategies that we are using uh, has some influence in the, the optimizations that we can do in our ZX uh, diagram to optimize the number of qubits. And so an open problem is to find uh, correction strategies that allow us to, to better optimize the number of qubits. Uh, also, we saw that this can be used for several computational models, like quantum circuits, latest surgery, or MBQC. Uh, but there exist uh, a lot of different computational models. And so it will be interesting to, to investigate what are the, the limitations of this optimization approach for, uh, for some other computational models. Also, we only optimized uh, the number of qubits, but when we are doing that, uh, it can also increase the depth of the circuit. So what we would like to do is to optimize both the number of qubits, but also the depth of the circuit. Uh, and finally, what we could do is to add some connectivity constraints uh, in, um, in order also to take into account uh, uh, the cases such as uh, in the surface code, for example, in which uh, we have some uh, connectivity constraints. Uh, all right, that's it. So thank you for your attention. All right, thanks, Vivian, for the nice talk. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience? All right, Sarah? Thank you for the talk. Um, I wonder, so you're saying that the number of physical qubits could be as a trade of resources for a lot of like logical qubits or like gate count or circuit depth. Um, if we're talking about eliminating the number of physical qubits, then if we take a look at the, for example, uh, superconducting circuits, then not all qubits are of the same fidelity. I wonder, is it possible for us to also assign weight to different qubits so that we know some qubits are more dangerous, you know, because they are creating more noises, so that they are of higher priority to eliminate, so that we could introduce priority in the qubit count optimization protocol. Uh, yes. So I guess what what we'd like to do is to, if you have better fidelity for for a qubit, you you would like to use more of this qubit uh, than others, I guess. Um, yeah, that's a good problem, but uh, I don't really know how it could be uh, taken into account uh, into our formulation of, of our problem. For me, it's more like uh, uh, you want to do that maybe after having optimized uh, the number of qubits. So especially if you have no connectivity constraints, uh, you can optimize the number of qubits. Uh, and then you can see that when we are doing that, we have a lot of measurements. And so we are when we are measuring a qubit, then we can use it again later and initialize it. And so if you have some good qubits uh, in your device, then I guess you want to maximize uh, the, the usage of, uh, of this qubit. But yeah, this is a problem that I'm not very familiar with, but uh, it would be an interest, interesting approach uh, I remember... to combine it with uh, this method. Yeah. Yeah, like for example, in this picture, if you look at the picture right before you go to the uh, the bottom left picture, mm -hmm. which is a, a lifetime of the qubits of the circuit input, uh, the, the input circuit, is this uh, partition unique or you could have a different way to chop the lifetime of qubits? Uh, yes, I guess you could have a... A different way. For example, you can uh, you can move a little bit these intervals. Um, but yeah, I don't know exactly how we can optimize that. But there are different uh, uh, for the same number of qubits. You can do uh, a lot of different uh, outcomes. Yeah. Thanks.
That's your question. Uh, yeah, thanks, Vivian, for the talk. Uh, I had a question, of course, on the DQC part. Uh, I didn't understand why you would put this the spider fusion uh, into that global picture. Where would that okay. sit? So it is used two times, actually. So the first one is uh, here at the top uh, when we have our circuit. Basically, what we want to do is to fuse all the spiders which can be fused. Uh, and then it will be the algorithm that will tell us how we have to unfuse the spiders. So when we solve uh, our problem, it gives us these intervals. And these intervals are, are telling us how to unfuse the, uh, the spiders. So in, in, in MBQC, it should be the same thing. We will use the, the fusion of wool here in order to unfuse the, the spiders. So is that clear? Oh. Uh, yes, but I still need to think about it more. Thanks. Okay, okay yeah. basically what I'm saying is uh, we are doing the, the same thing, but it is that because we are in the MBQC, the, the spider are connected by uh, other not edges. Uh, and so uh, we need to, to do the, the infusion uh, while preserving this property. OK. OK, thanks. Um, so for Fion, there's the question. Um, so I believe that this problem of like, um, when you consider all possible diagrams you can rewrite to, and like find the minimal path width amongst them, that will be like a hard problem. That sounds very reasonable. I wonder if you um, restrict to just Clifford rewrite rules or say like you work with parameterized diagrams where like the decomposition has to work for all possible parameters. Do you think it would be easier to do it there or would you still run into the problem of like this is essentially as hard as like C-not count optimization? There's just like way too many possibilities you have to check and there's no easy way to see whether you've gotten the global optimum. Um. Yeah, so the, the problem in the general case looks a very hard problem, of course, because even in these cases, it is already a NP hard problem. Uh, but we have some good formulation uh, of these problems. And so, yeah, actually, I, I don't know if uh, which restrictions uh, we should put uh, into uh, or the next diagram or into this uh, set of words. In order to still have some uh, some uh, some good intuition and formulation of the problem, so yeah, maybe uh, the way you said it for for parameterized circuits or things like that it could be a, a good way to investigate that. Uh, and I, I don't really know if we if we would be able to to find something good uh, about that because it. Yeah, as you said, it looks like a little bit like optimizing the, the number of node gates. So it doesn't look so uh, easy to, to formalize uh, this kind of problem. Maybe maybe like a different route. Like could could there be some kind of equivalence between this and C not count optimization? Mm, I don't think so, because uh here we are just minimizing the number of uh of qubits, yeah, yeah, and so we can have a, a very small number of qubits, but a very important depth. And so, because we have an important depth, we can have a lot of uh, C not gates. You see, uh, for example, here, if we add more uh, vertical wires here in this set of diagram, then it will not increase the number of uh, of qubits. I don't know. You can add. Uh, you can add some synod gates between the uh, these intervals C and B, uh, and it will not increase uh, the number of qubits uh, in our so this diagram. So for me, it's not really connected to to this kind of gate optimization problem. Okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. Do we have any other questions from the audience? Okay. Um, yeah, Vivian, you you ended with like some uh, open problems. Like, are, are there questions you would you would ask us or like things that uh, that we that 
you think we should maybe also also like look at or or, or think about? Um, yeah, I, I don't have any specific questions. I, I just think that a lot of uh, uh, this this work can be used uh, as a basis for a lot of of other problems yeah. like that. And there's probably a good improvement that, that can be made on, on this approach. Um, so, yeah, so actually, it's something that uh, did you have you implemented all of this in software? Uh, yes, I'm actually working on a, on a new version of the paper with uh, better algorithms and better benchmark uh, because the, the algorithms uh, for solving this problem are, are, are yeah are quite difficult to uh, are taking a, a lot of time uh, computationally. Yeah. So I, I try to 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 improve them a little bit and and yeah, it will be in a, in a new version of the papers uh, of the paper in the in the upcoming week. Yeah, I guess all of that also talks to your TCAN optimization algorithm, to because uh, like this Hadamard count optimization is close close related to that. So yeah, yeah, all of that. Sarah, uh, thanks for uh bring us to this page because I I I was wondering the good correction strategy like how does this fit into the cubic count optimization protocol like are you gonna do this before reducing it to a graph problem or like how do they fit together? Oh, OK, so the way I formulized it uh, in my paper uh, is that if we have some ZS diagram, uh, what we can do is, is compute some kind of flow uh, uh, in this ZX diagram. Uh, there are a lot of different uh, flow. Uh, but in latest surgery, for example, I'm using the PF flow. And basically, the PF flow is, uh, is computing some layers uh, of uh, the ZX diagram, so that for each layer, the corrections are done on the subsequent layers. And so then uh, my approach for optimizing the number of qubits is done individually for each layer. But also it would be interesting to, to look at uh, the correction strategies uh, because when we are doing that, maybe between each layer, we have a lot of uh, qubits. And so this is not really optimized uh, in this approach. So that's why uh, some different correction strategies uh, can have uh, big influences in the number of qubits that we, that we get at the end. Yeah. So can I understand that? by applying different correction strategy to each layer, then you may have a different graph to start with by applying those graph theoretic strategies. So that would affect the ultimate um, reduced cubic count. Yeah. So yeah, many what I'm saying is that you could, uh, you could find other layers uh, to, to separate your ZS diagrams into uh, uh, into correction strategies. So there are, because if you are running the PF flow, it's just giving you one answer. But maybe there is uh, a lot of other PF flows uh, for which uh, which are better to use uh, to optimize the number of qubits. Right. So the goal is to, among all the possible correction strategies, uh, it would be to use uh, the one uh, which allows us to to optimize the number of qubits uh, as much as much as we can, yeah. Thanks.